All right, so let's talk about advanced function parameters in PowerShell. Why would you want to use these things? Um, well, let's say that you open up a daycare and your daycare happens to be next to an endless pit of darkness and despair. Um, so if the kitties are running around playing and, and one of them jumps into the uh, endless pit of darkness and despair, their parents are probably going to be a little pissed off at you because you didn't put some sort of division or preventative measures even though you knew there was an endless pit of darkness and despair. Um, so you should have put a fence up and advanced function parameters out allow us to uh, essentially create fences um, around our, our function parameters so that uh, we can restrict um, certain types of input into them and prevent um, people who are using our scripts from falling into their own pit of darkness and despair. So uh, let's look at how we can make this a, a much more robust function here. I have this function that just simply takes in two um, parameters and it will add them together. Uh, so if I run this, add num, and I give it two numbers, five and seven, you'll see that it performs the arithmetic. But what if I put in a string? Well, that, that was not the purpose of my script. So uh, let's look at one of the first really simple ways that you can add some limitations uh, to your function parameters. And that is by specifying a type for them. So uh, all these um, additions that we're going to make, you want to make sure that you put them in front of your de declared variables. And uh, you need to also know that it's only, it only works with the param block. There's other ways that you can define uh, passing parameters, but um, these are specifically for the param block, so just remember that. So we're going to specify the type, and obviously um, you can see by the variable names that I'm looking for integers because I'm trying to do some arithmetic. So we simply just use um, the, the type notations in PowerShell to identify what we have here. So I want to identify these as integers, and I can use many different types if I wanted to have an array, I could use array. If it was a string, I could use string. In this case, we have integers. So when I run this code again, uh, it does the arithmetic. And if I provide a string, uh-oh, you'll see that I get an error back. And uh, it even tells me that it can't convert this string to a system in 32. So now I know that this parameter requires uh, a in 32 so that's um, one way that you can limit what what is being inputted in there so there's lots of different types that you can specify and there's also another one that I want to show you real quick so let me just um, build this thing here right host flag used okay so uh, let's say that I, I wanted to have um, a parameter, you'll notice that you can supply the parameter names and then supply the parameter afterwards. Uh, so sometimes you want to create a parameter that is essentially a switch. Uh, it, it either exists, and if it exists, something different will happen, or it doesn't. Um, but you don't need to supply it any information. So what I'm going to do is create a switch parameter. I'm going to call it flag, and you'll see that it, here in this if statement, it's going to validate whether flag is true or not. And uh, if it's true, it means that somebody had supplied flag as a parameter. And I'll just go ahead and use int2 as well, and we'll put 5. So when I run this, you'll see that this block of code is executed simply because we uh, supplied the flag parameter. Um, so that is a nifty little thing that you can do. Let's go ahead and get rid of all that. Um, so we have identified the type, and that has helped us uh, restrict um, our function's use somewhat. There's another construct we can use called uh, parameter attributes, and that allows us to um, specify some other cool things that we can do with each of our parameters. And we specify that by using this parameter block. And we call it much in the same way 
that we specify the types. And uh, the difference is it's got this little parentheses in here. And so when we supply this parameter block, of course, in front of our variable, um, we can start adding other cool things into this little parentheses block here. So let's look at some of these things. So we can supply a position value. Uh, you'll notice that in one of the examples, I didn't supply uh, the parameter names. And um, PowerShell by default will accept the parameters in the order that they've been defined in here. But if you want to change the position in which you supply these variables, you can uh, come in here and you can add a position to it. And so that is how you begin building these parameter attributes is by supplying them within this parameter block. Um, if you want to make sure that a parameter is mandatory, uh, and like much like the variables themselves, you would separate these with a comma, you can specify whether it's mandatory. So in this case, I have said that uh, it is true. It, it needs to be mandatory. Um, let's look at something else. Oh, I actually didn't finish this one. Help message. Uh, you can specify a help message. Do this. That's not very helpful, but it's okay. So when you specify something to be mandatory uh, and somebody leaves it out, PowerShell will force you to enter that variable. So let's go ahead and just run it. We'll run it without any parameters and you'll see okay cannot find the type for custom attribute parameter what it probably helps if I if I spell it correctly doesn't it okay so let's try it again add num you'll see uh, command let add num at this pipeline position one supply the values for the following parameters so it tells me that I need to supply that parameter. So I can go ahead and enter the parameter. And because I didn't enter a second one, um, it simply didn't do anything. But that is a way that you can force people to enter a specific uh, parameter. Um, value from the pipeline. You'll notice that in many commandlets, you can pipeline information to them. And uh, if you want, to select one of these to be able uh, to be pipelined, you can add it to the parameter attribute block. And this can only be used for um, one parameter at a time. But if you want to add multiples, you can look up value from pipeline uh, by property name. And that will give you the ability to pass uh, multiple things by their property names. But we're not going to look into that right now. So let's run this. And um, let's just do five and then pass it to add num and you'll see it uh, it knows to use that value in this parameter block uh, so that is another little addition there um, so this parameter statement there's a bunch of different things that you can do with this with it this is just some of them uh, to go over real quickly uh, so let's say um, you want to even add aliases to your parameter names in this case uh, they're, they're short names, so it doesn't really matter, but sometimes you want to be very specific in, in the parameter names, uh, but you also want to give people the ease of using a shorter name. Uh, in this case, we'll just call it A and AL. So when we run this, we can use AL5, and then we'll just apply the other parameter here. And you'll see that AL was, was used correctly as, uh, as a parameter. We could use A as well. Uh, so we can add aliases to our parameter names. Say you have a really long name, like uh, computer names list. Well, you could shorten it to just computers if you wanted to. And um, that will make it easier for people to use your functions. Uh, so let's look at parameter validations now. So we, we were able to add some some specific attributes to our, uh, our our parameters here. We could 
add an alias to short and then we specify a type uh, but let's say that we want to actually um, put limitations on what can be accepted for this parameter and we do that with uh, parameter validation and here's a, a, a list of some of them um, and we'll just go real quick down the list and and see what these do now you can just you know add these into your script so this one is allow null uh, if you want to allow the person to enter a null value you can just add that into your parameter list of course before uh, the parameter um, and then we have other things like allow an empty string allow an empty collection uh, you can validate the count so as I said before you could specify that the person can um, they can supply an array of items and you can limit the the number of items within that array by supplying validate count uh, if they're supplying a string and you want to limit the uh, the string you can use um, validate length and make sure it's between five and ten characters long uh, if if you're supplying a number you can make sure that the number is within a specific range uh, if you want to be very specific in uh, the, the values that somebody is entering into the parameter block in this case uh, it's, it's not you know relevant to our example but um, you can limit the words that people can enter into your script so in this case they could enter low average or high and if they don't uh, they will get an error and you can even do regex here as well so this is a regex example that will force the person to enter a four digit number uh, where each digit is within zero or nine you could change it to be within zero or five so there's lots of different ways where you can make sure that the person is entering uh, certain uh, information so let's just go ahead and do validate range we'll add it here and uh, let's go ahead and add it to our second variable and we'll make this one between 5 and 10 and this one between 0 and 4 so when we run this and I go to add num uh, so we'll make that 5 and we'll make this 6 when I run it you'll see that it gets an error cannot validate argument on parameter int 1 the, the 5 argument is greater than the maximum allowed range of 4 so um, all these validations also help people understand where they went wrong in using your function as well so you don't have to um, write that in anywhere so let's go ahead and enter the correct values and it works it it, it understands that uh, that is within the the validation range and so um, we can continue forth using the script um, so this is just a, a really simple overview overview uh, there's so much more to this it, it goes really deep one of the great things about PowerShell is that you can you know do things in a very simple way um, and it's it's completely fine or you can go real deep and, and add all kinds of um, mechanisms to to uh, make sure that you're only operating within a, a specific set so uh, that is that is just the, the, the simple view of it um, and hopefully in, in some other videos I will try to get a little little bit deeper but not not as deep as the the pit of darkness and despair because that's that's a little too deep for me uh, so that's it thanks for watching